there's another uh, PDF pattern that I've downloaded. Um, someone mentioned it on Instagram, and I can't remember her name, but I'll put a, her uh, Instagram na name up there if I can remember it. And it's Skill Level 2 Advanced Beginner, and it's a hat. And basically, you get the front page, you get the instructions, uh, and it's a free download, which is really good. So I downloaded, obviously. And let me get to the other pages, if I can get to them. There is more instructions. There's two pages of instructions, and then you get the hat. You get all the patterns for the hat. Now, this is slightly different because if I take one and I take two, let's take one and two. I've got a cat here watching. Um, if I take one and two, one will go on there. There's no line to match up, but you basically get it so that that line more or less continues with that. There's a slight difference there. But that's not a great problem. Anyway, I'm going to stick it all up and you can see what it's like. I made the foolish mistake of throwing away the wrong one of these. Those of you who have a computerized uh, sewing machine will know that this is a buttonhole maker. And this one was from my old brother machine. And I saw it, I saw the other one and I thought, oh, this one must be the better one. And for some ridiculous reason, do not ask me why I binned the other one because the other one was all plastic. And then when I tried doing buttonholes with this, it I had no end of problems. It was going down one side and then back. And then it was going starting further up and going right up and then coming back. So I ended up with a long band and a short band. And it was doing my head in. So yesterday, the powers of Amazon got me a replacement. And this is the, the very one... The very style that I got rid of, I figured that that one was obviously the better quality one with it having metal on it. This is the one that I got rid of and I had to reorder from through Amazon. Cost me about £3.50, thank goodness. I have used it to make buttonholes and I've made the most wonderful buttonholes with it. So, if your buttonhole maker like that is not working properly and you're getting it all erratic... It could be that you need to bin that and get a new one. But only bin that one when you've got the new one in place and you can try it out. But that is definitely miles better. I have now got absolutely wonderful buttonholes. If I can show you my buttonholes, where are they? I'll show you them. These are my buttonholes. I've just gone and opened them up. You can see I've, all, I've got them opened up, but they're... Are absolutely wonderful look at that buttonholes to perfection all because I used that one instead of this very old one I don't know that there's much difference in it uh, that one is that one's longer so it's possible that with that being my old machine it wasn't the right length and that was what but I remember that was one of the reasons why I invested in a new machine because I was having issues with this so I think there's obviously something wrong with that that there isn't with this one three pound eighty I think it was and well worth the money spent so the buttons I'm going to put on are these they're going to be all multicolored look at that all different colors yellows pinks greens and orange they're all going to go on to here
It is Friday, Friday the, Friday the, Friday the 16th, it's half three, it's boiling hot, the thing I find is that every time America gets hot weather, so many days later we get the hot weather, when America gets downpours, a few days later we get the downpours, so we've had the downpours last week, heavy downpours now we're getting the hot weather not hot by your standards but hot by our standards very hot anyway I will put a little video up about some fabric that I had Q spotty fabric well I've got this fabric and I quite fancy dyeing it orange so that these little white spots or these big white spots will turn out orange because I've noticed that I really suit orange and this black and white not sure whether it'll go right and at the same time I'm going to try and dye this don't know if you can see that because I've got quite a lot of it and I might do half of it that color and half of it orange if it dies so this is it like this black and white spots mm. Let's try it with orange. And do you want to see what it comes turned out like? Well, this is what it turned out like. I love it. 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 It is a lovely. That, that, I mean, that in there, that doesn't look very bright, but this is a beautiful tango orange type of orange spot. And I can see this being made into an absolutely beautiful dress. I love it it's gorgeous um, the one thing I found is orange used to be on my color palette when I had brown hair and every time I wear an orange dress you all say oh or an orange top or something you all say it looks lovely so I figure with gray hair this orange is starting to make it me glow a bit more so I'm going I've dyed that and that's going to be made into a lovely dress now then I made a comment that I don't wash fabrics. No, I don't. But the thing is, some two, Marjorie made a point. I think it's Marjorie said, well, you do, you wash all your, when you dye things, you wash them. Very true. They go in the washing machine and they are washed. All the things that I dye, yes, they will be, they will be washed in the water as they go. So yes, I would agree with you there. But I don't, if that was black and white and I was going to wear it, I was going to make something from it, I would not wash it. I would only wash it if I was dying it. I wouldn't wash it. But someone else, else made a valid point and I thought, you know, she's right. I very rarely, up until lately, have made cottons. And because I haven't made cottons, I would agree, cottons and linens do, do shrink. Although I've just made some rayon chalice tops, I've washed them and they haven't shrunk and I think a lot has to do with the fact that every time I do something I press it with the steam and by pressing it with steam I'm actually shrinking it as I go and I know that when I did a tailoring course because I was making a wool jacket and the gentleman who taught me was a tailor by trade he said um, he said when you press it you press it with the steam and that not only holds the shape but it shrinks the fibers a bit to make them hold make them firmer so i believe that the steam pressing which i've always always done whenever i iron something even when i'm finished i give it a good steam press top to bottom to make it look pristine and uh, 
uh, you know, just really nice. And I think that steam pressing actually shrinks it as well. But I think I bought some linen. Now, w linen and chambray. Now, I've had the chambray a while. But would I wash that beforehand or will I be taught a lesson? Uh, when I'm reading a lot of things, a lot of you people say that linens you would wash. So, I don't know whether I should take that risk. It would be because linen isn't cheap so I think I will wash the linen beforehand but it does lose a lot the, the only thing about washing linen is it um, it gets all crinkly in afterwards when you washed it and hold on there's a parcel from Amazon coming hang on presents for my grandson it's his birthday a week on Sunday and he is eight years old so I had to get something for him because we will be away on holiday with him and I, I suddenly thought oh god you haven't got anything anyway what was I going to what was I telling you about I was telling you about oh so I will press linen I will wash linen but I'll tell you about washing linen the only thing about washing linen is when you've washed linen sometimes I know you've got to be careful how you wash it but it comes out rather creased and you can press it and get the creases out you don't get them perfectly pressed and that that is something that i don't i'm not overly keen on but um what did i want to say to you about that oh i remember i was i, I used to go to phoenix in newcastle and they were a big department store they are a big department store and they sell fabrics and when after done all the round of the fabric department I'd go up to the uh, the ladies clothing department look at the clothes and I'd go into the posh parts you know the French salon and the other places which I don't know if they're still around there now because I haven't been to Phoenix for years but anyway um, one day I was perusing some clothes when this young woman came in and obviously they recognized her and they were saying oh we, she must regularly go in buy clothes and they said we've got some new clothes and some new garments for you and she said well i'm bringing these ones back i'm not happy with them and they said what's the matter and she said well she says they crease when i wear them they crease and i think she was obviously some well-to-do businesswoman who bought clothes regularly and it was when linen started coming out linen clothes started coming out years 20 30 years ago 20 years 20 plus years ago and uh, she said it creases a lot and she pulled it out and it was creased and they said well madam you've got to iron it and linen does crease you know linen doesn't you know that's the whole thing about linen it does crease but it's a man-made it's a, a natural fiber and a natural fiber is like cotton it does crease well I want my money back I'm not happy about that I'll exchange it for something else so they did they willingly exchanged because obviously they reckoned when she went away she said uh, do tell me do let me know when the next batch of clothes come in so they obviously sell regularly to her and when she did buy some clothes she wasn't spending 50 pounds she was spending about four or five hundred pounds so um you know that was that i realized that this was a woman with money and also she had never come across linen before because at the time i was thinking doesn't she know that linen always creases <laughs> But that's what's lovely about linen, it does crease and you, are you bothered, do you care? Not really. So um, yes, I've got some linen but I think I will probably wash it first. Just gentle wash, just to be certain that it's not going to shrink once I've made it. Um, now then, I've got, the, the sound you can hear in the background is my laser which is making pointers for me. I'm busy turning out pointers for these educational clocks that I'm doing, that I'm making. Hey. Hello! Another delivery. That was for his lord. No, it was for me. A delivery for me. <laughs> Any, no, not, not clothes though. It was for me to create plates and things. I've made a lot of makes and I'm never ever going to get this, this video put together to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to tell you about it in a little note form and then I'm going to show you what I made. Um, see if I can remember I've made a, a, Mon, a Stylock Montana dress uh, the pattern I think I may already have recorded this but I actually got the pattern I've re video recorded it for you to see that it came got the pattern out traced it out 
made the dress, I traced it out and I realised that they sent me the wrong size. I'd asked for the size 4 to 16 and they'd sent me the 18 to 24 and I thought oh I might be able to get away with the 18. So I traced off the 18, made the 18 it was massive. So then I thought what am I going to do? I traced it off so that was fine. But then I did a little naughty thing which I wouldn't normally like to do but I suddenly thought well I bought it on Amazon and I thought I'm going to ask to send it back because well, I went to look and see what I'd ordered and I'd ordered 4 to, four to 14 or some, yeah 4 to 14 I think it was and I thought I'm going to ask to send it back because that's not the size that I asked for so and I looked at all the reviews and people kept saying they've sent me the wrong size they sent me the wrong size so obviously they were saying it was 4 to 14 and they were sending the 18 to 24 so anyway I sent it back got my money back I would not do that reg regularly I thought it was a good idea but then I thought no you can't do that regularly because Amazon would pick up on that and um, so I still had that tracing and so I modified it made it smaller the, I'd made two garments from the Montana and one of them was way too big and so in the end I had to put a seam down the middle because I, it was it was here really wide I should have worked it out but I didn't and in the end I had to pull it in a bit got a white cat here she's coming to see what's going on she's trying to find a comfortable place she's sitting on top of all my stuff are you sitting on all my stuff yes are you sitting on all my stuff yes you are who's that cat can you see that cat look at that cat there's a cat who's that <laughs> anyway um so oh yes so i made the i made the the um style art montana i wasn't really impressed with the, the instructions they were all right but and to be fair i didn't really need to follow them but they did it with a bodice an inside bodice and i, I haven't made an inside bodice lining for a long long time and i did it straight away i got the idea but the instructions didn't really explain it very well and thankfully my knowledge made me realize what i was supposed to be doing but i think for somebody who did didn't know it might have proved a bit difficult to understand um so anyway i made i've either made two or three of those so whatever they are i'll put the pictures up of those the style art montana dress love the pattern i showed you that i bought it but um they sent me the wrong size i ordered up to a, a size 16 bust and they sent me an 18 to 24 which was way too big but i still think that it's a bit baggy i've actually put darts in there and i'm thinking i just feel like it's a little bit on the baggy side there so i feel i ought to take it in a bit there now can you hear who's here who's we've got a little granddaughter here 
she's playing with the Lego and the older one is doing a school lesson in the in the sitting room. So go and see. Come on then. Oh, she's gone. Little ones helping her granddad, I think. Let's see what she's doing. Our lawn needs cutting. What are you doing? Eh? I'll come and see, yeah. Show me what you've done. Have you had chocolate today? I bet your granddad took you to the chocolate factory. No. Did he not? No, we got a pan of chocolate. Oh, you got a pan of chocolate, did you? So where's that forward? Move that that way and then you can see what's going on. Where's the forward? Where's the what? Yeah, pretend. Oh, I don't know. It's in here. It's in here. Is it? There's a car. You got two cars. Ooh, two cars. And oh, there's lots of things here, but I can't see. Pretend. A uh, pretend what? Three cars. Look at your dirty face. Look at that dirty face. Can you see it? Well, 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 why was that in there? What's that in there? Why was that in there? Why was that in there? It wasn't in there. Why did you find it? I had it already. We'll leave her to keep looking at her Lego. She's trying to find the pretend something or other. Pretend forward. Pretend phone. Yeah. Oh, I've got that. Just a minute. Well, this is the style of Montana dress that I was telling you about. Um, I like it. I like the style, but I feel like it's a little bit too big on the sides. It's very gapy. I actually did a size 18 because I, they, they sent me the wrong pattern. I feel it needs to go in a bit. I've actually taken it in already. I put darts there and uh, to add a bit more shape to it and i just feel it's rather slack especially around the back here you can see it when i turn around ap under the arm and around the back so i just feel i need to modify it somehow <laughs>